Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. So today on the video, guys, we're going to be talking about pilots fighting in the cockpit. Has it happened? And what can you do to make sure it doesn't happen to you? So stay tuned. Wind 31016, right, right. Delta two six. Right, guys, before I start this video, I want to give a shout out to my Patreon crew. Now, my Patreon crew is made up of people who are supporting the channel both financially, but also by previewing my videos, um, checking that I don't say anything stupid or factually wrong, and also checking out which thumbnails to use if I'm not sure about that, things like that. I also do some private kind of Skype hangouts and things with them when they have things they're wondering about and want to talk to me one on one. So if you sound that this is something that you would like to join then just use the card up here or there's going to be a link at the end of the video and you can just check it out and if you want to join you're more than welcome to right guys so um pilots fighting in the cockpit um i'm gonna start by talking about how you can avoid this right how you can keep this from happening and still making sure that the aircraft is safe and then at the end we'll also talk a little bit about where this has happened before and what the backgrounds were to that so um what you have to understand is that pilots today professional pilots are being trained from the beginning of their um, kind of school their flight school throughout their airline career in something called crm crew resource management and that includes things like conflict resolution, all right? That basically means how to deal when a conflict arises because being a pilot is not like being Superman, all right? We are humans like everyone else and we will come across people that we just do not like or people that we disagree with or people who does and says things that just makes us angry, all right? This is completely normal and completely human. Um, Especially when you like we are sitting in a space the size of a normal closet for 12 hours working under fairly stressful circumstances. So, so what do we do then if a conflict does arise? Well, first of all, we have to talk about if that conflict has to do with the flight, as in with flight safety or not. So if it has to do with flight safety, uh, it's going to be your responsibility as a crew member to speak up. Okay, you can never let anyone else as part of the crew or anyone else jeopardize the safety of the flight. So if you're flying, for example, as a first officer with a captain and the captain is starting to break rules or doing things that will jeopardize the safety of the flight, well, then you have to speak up. And you can do that in kind of an escalating way where you start off by asking a question, you know, asking where, you know, why he or she is doing it in a specific way. Maybe they're not aware. Of the fact that they're breaking a rule and by you asking a question they might think oh actually I didn't mean to do that so then the conflict never really arises but if they persist and they continue uh, and just kind of brush you off or whatever well then you're going to have to escalate it and you have to tell them that I am not happy with this okay whatever it is that you're doing I do not agree with it and I'm not happy with this course of action and I would say that just saying that you're not happy with what they're doing is going to resolve 98% of all of the problems. Because any trained pilot who's gone through any kind of CRM training will know that this a co-pilot or indeed a captain saying that they're not happy with something actually means that they have, you know, that they take this thing very seriously. So any captain worth his or her salt is going to react by taking a step back, maybe abandoning the approach that they're doing, you know, just do a go around, calm things down and then continue with another go, another um, approach or whatever it might be. Um, so that is very, very um, effective. And then, of course, you are going to have to increasingly, you know, heighten your voice, look them in the eyes. This is you know, that looking the person in the eyes is something that you might think is completely natural in a situation like that. But remember, as pilots, we're sitting next to each other, looking straight ahead. So actually looking someone in the eye means that you have to move towards them and actually face them like this. Um, and in a situation like that, it can be crucial because you have to show that you're not joking. All right, Captain, I am not happy with this. I think that we should go for a holding. We should ask for extra track miles or I think we should slow down or things like that, look them in the eye and look serious. That is going to be a great tool for you, okay? 
Uh, other tools, which I'm actually going to do a separate video about, is the OFDM system, the uh, Operational Flight Data Monitoring System that we have on board, that actually records things, like, you know, if we are um, going over speed limits, things like that, it does record it, and you can actually refer to that. If you don't want to take on the responsibility of actually uh, creating a potential conflict, you can tell them that, listen, I think this is, you know, if we don't slow down, um, the OFDM is going to pick that up and we might be in trouble later. So there's always a way to deflect things from becoming an actual personal um, conflict. But then, of course, if the person does not react to this, you're going to have to take it up more and more. You're going to have to increase the level of your voice. And at, at the end, you're going, to tell, you're going to have to tell them that if you don't stop this, I believe this to be dangerous. If you don't stop this, I'm going to have to take controls. Um, and ultimately take control if you think that this has to do with, for example, subtle incapacitation, where uh, a pilot might be inter, you know, doing stuff on the controls, but might not be there mentally. It has been known to happen, but it's very rare. Now, that's the one side, that's the professional side, where you have to always be assertive and give your view about what the safest course of action is. I cannot overemphasize this, guys. If you are or want to become a pilot, you have to know that you might find yourself in a situation where you disagree with something and you have to assert your view. Speak up. Always speak up. All right, so the other side is where it has nothing to do with, um, with the safety of the aircraft. So um, the person you're flying may, might have made bad comments about you, might be just, a, just acting bad, being an asshole, basically, towards you, um, or might be you know, showing racist views, or whatever it might be. So that doesn't have anything to do with the safety of the aircraft, but of course it's going to offend you personally. Now here is where you have to, to a certain extent, just kind of grind your teeth and wait. Because under no circumstances can we allow personal differences to start a fight in the cockpit, okay? Not even a verbal fight in the cockpit. And the reason for this is that you know how it is. When you get into an actual verbal confrontation with someone, the, um, your adrenaline will start pumping, you will start to get narrower vision. This is how people kind of, you know, our um, Neanderthal part of us is preparing for an actual fight. The problem with that in an aircraft setting is that it will take off your attention from everything else. And you're going to start shouting at the other person, they will shout back at you and you will not notice alarm bells so that you're closing in on terrain or anything like that. So basically, if you find yourself in a situation like that, you have to bite your tongue and wait. Right? Get the aircraft down, don't matter how much that person is, is you know, calling your names or whatever, just get the aircraft safely onto the ground. Once you've stopped the aircraft at the gate, then it's the time to act. You can always just stop the aircraft, tell the person that I do not appreciate what you said, I find it highly um, upsetting or whatever it be. Be honest and tell them that I will not take this kind of behavior from you. There's nothing stopping you from actually getting off the flight deck. If you feel that you cannot fly safely with the other person, then the only thing left to you to do is, once you're on the ground, leave the cockpit, call the company and say that, you, because of this, uh, I am unable to continue flying with this person. Now, that will mean that you are going to have to write a report about this as well. And any time that you intend to write a report about someone, it's professional courtesy to tell that person. So, this is something that I would la would you know, do as an absolute last resort, and it's only if you feel that you definitely cannot operate with this person in a safe way. If you can, if you can have a discussion where you tell the person that you didn't appreciate it, and the person reciprocates and say, listen, I'm having a bad day, I have this stress, this is what's happening to me, I apologize, well, then you've solved the problem, and it's not really a problem anymore. But if the person continues just being, maybe this person actually is an asshole, you know, 
Well, then you have to tell them that, listen, I, I'm going to be able to continue to fly with you. I will file a report on your behavior and, and that's it. And the person knows now that it's going to be subject to a report so he can pre- or she can prepare themselves for whatever that means. And you are not continuing to fly and jeopardizing the safety of everyone. So has this happened before? Well, yes, we've had a, a few examples of this happening. Uh, there was a quite publicized report from a Jet Airways flight from London to, I think, uh, Delhi, on a, um, where the male captain slapped his female first officer and she came out crying from the cockpit. This was reported. And the Both crew members were you know, taken off flight while the matter was being resolved. I haven't read the final report on that, but that is, of course... Very serious. Physical violence can never ever be accepted inside of a flight deck or in any working condition or any type place in society, really. But then we also have the, the deadly, the deadly violence that has happened inside of the cockpit. And the most recent example of that is, of course, the uh, German Wings 9525, uh, where the, um, the co pilot had um, psychological issues and locked his um, captain outside of the cockpit and then proceeded by flying the aircraft into the Alps. Now, that's not a fight per se, but it's definitely a a violent act committed um, by the first officer in this case. We have another example as well, which is a slightly older example. It was the uh, FedEx Flight 705, where a um, disgruntled um, employee, another pilot, attacked the flying crew members as they were uh, climbing out and try to kill them in order to crash the aircraft and, kill, and give um, insurance, life insurance money to his surviving family. Um, I think, at least I think that was the motive, but no one really knows. Um, that was bravely fought off by the other crew members and it was stopped, but that, then we're talking about people who have psychological issues, um, and that's not really your kind of day-to-day um, operational thing to, to handle. So the only thing to do there, of course, is to, to try to save the aircraft in whatever way you can, which is what the FedEx guys did, which is what they were unable to do because of the locked cockpit door on the um, German Wings 9525 incident, which is a, a tragedy that is having repercussions um, to, to ho- the whole pilot body um, even today. Right, guys, that's all I had. I hope that you have subscribed to the channel. I hope that you have uh, ticked the little notification bell so that you get notifications whenever I do new videos, whenever I do live streams and things like that. And check out mentorpilot.com, by the way. And like I said, a huge thank you to the members of my Patreon crew. There's going to be a link to it both here in the description of the video, together with links to my Instagram account, to my website, and to the Mentor Aviation app, which I'm hoping that all of you guys have taken part of. Now, if you haven't seen that already, I am doing my best to create a a society of people who are interested in aviation, who are becoming pilots, and like me, who are already pilots. A forum where people can go in and ask questions and get them answered by professionals. If you haven't downloaded the app, it's completely for free. Check it out now. Have a fantastic day wherever you are, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.